Well, good morning and welcome to the Lady Grove Church's thought for today on this wonderfully rainy day. The garden needs it, I guess. I know that uh, Little Britain uh, has come in for some stick recently because of um, Matt Lucas and David Williams' portrayal of um, black people through a bit of backing up themselves. But um, certainly the other other aspects of, of that programme that I used to enjoy. Um, one being the, the well-known person stuck behind a computer that would regularly say, the computer says no, uh, over the most obvious of things. And we had a, a real live example of that yesterday. Sorry if you're not a, a football uh, follower, but the Aston Villa Manchester, sorry, Aston Villa, Sheffield United match. Um, there was a clear goal. All the players, both sides, realised it was a goal. The goalie who had let it in realised it was a goal. Um, and they all look to the referee, and the referee appears to think it's a goal, but he looks on his his phone, which seems to be attached to this Hawkeye um, system, and because the Hawkeye system couldn't see that the ball had gone over the line it wasn't a goal the computer said no despite the fact that the vast majority well all but the goalkeeper on the other side probably realized that it was a goal it got me thinking <laughs> got me thinking about your you'll, you'll, you'll understand where this is coming from surely it, it got me thinking about david and goliath it's one samuel chapter 17 i'm going to start reading from verse 20. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd. Loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed, he reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle position, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies ran to the battle line and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's eldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down, and with whom do you, did you leave those, those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now what have I done, said David? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter, and the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. We often <coughs> read that and the following passage, and it's, it's a good one to take into schools about uh, bullying, how David stood up 
to Goliath. But almost that passage before the actual fight highlights something else which I think is going on in the world quite a bit today. And that is the need for people to have courage to stand up. That football match yesterday, when you think that the vast majority, and they're saying that both teams knew it was a goal, then why? Why on earth didn't someone say, Ref, that was a goal? Why didn't the goalkeeper who let it in say, Ref, why that was a goal? Why do we have to all look to a machine which clearly sometimes is wrong? It's funny, you sort of you see the sort of comparison between that. 21 football players not having the courage to challenge something which was wrong and one football player actually having the guts to stand up to the government and challenge some decision that was wrong. And of course then we had the killing of uh, George Floyd in America where one policeman knelt on his throat and killed him while others stood on and watched and didn't stop their colleague. And somebody pointed out, well, yeah, one, one had only come out of training a couple of weeks ago. Well, in other words, before that, he wasn't a policeman. He, he knew what was right and wrong from the other side. He knew what it was like to be a civilian. Why didn't he challenge them? We see, you know, some crazy comments being made by presidents and other leaders and all those around them aren't stopping them. Medical specialists who hear people talk a load of old rubbish about bleach and medicines which are not safe and they just stand there in silence. How much better that would have been for someone to actually stood up in the tele televised conference and say, hey, actually no, you're wrong. That's unsafe. But no, we remain silent. Just like all the Israelites were remaining silent. There's times that we need more Davids. Times when we need more Marcus Rashfords who will stand up and challenge the status quo. We'll challenge a computer that's got it wrong. We'll challenge a leader or a group of people over their behaviour, their decisions. To me, I know they call David a, a man after God's own heart. He demonstrates that a dance like better before he was crowned king, I think, than after he was crowned king. He stood up and said, no, this is not going to happen. Thankfully, I guess we live a life where we don't have to often challenge the status quo. But who knows? There may come up times in the future when you see something's wrong and you have got the option stick with the bad apple or challenge it and kick it out. Let's hope that we will be up to that challenge and follow David's example. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for the example of David. We thank you that though he was just a young man at this stage, facing his older brothers, facing the rest of the Israelite army, even facing a king who had been chosen for his leadership. But David had the courage to stand up for what is right when he saw those around him not standing up for him. 
Lord, we pray for more people like David. People that will have the courage and integrity to even challenge those in authority and those in places of power and influence. Lord, we see so many signs of, of waste and, and ill treatment and inequality and we all know it's not meant to be like that that we are all meant to be cared for we are all to be valued so Lord we pray that when we have those opportunities to challenge that we will stand up and let our voices be heard And Father, we thank you for the way that that killing of George Floyd has led to the rising up of lots of ordinary people. And their voices are being heard. There is some change, not enough yet, but at least some change. And thank you that it has opened the eyes and ears of a a lot of people like myself who were probably ignorant and naive of just our history and just what it's like to be a person of uh, a minority. Lord, we pray that this, this movement won't end and that there will be a real coming together of people of all ethnicities and all understandings so that we can see a, a, a world that is more representative of your kingdom and Lord we pray for our government we pray for integrity We pray that people will acknowledge their failings and their mistakes. And we pray for a media and a parliament that will acknowledge and accept their apologies. We pray for work that is cross-party so much of the challenges and problems in our world are nothing to do with politics and politics just tends to stick an oar in and make things harder so we pray that you would unite us, you would unite us by our common humanity and allow that to be the driving force rather than whether we're left or right blue or red or green or yellow or whatever May we recognise that there is far more that unites us than divides us. We continue to pray for our health service and our carers. We continue to thank you for them. And pray that you would bless them this day. Continue to pray for our retail sector. And we pray for our hospitality industry that is still to open up. And we hear of so much um, confusion because there is a lack of guidance. Yeah. Hotels are being told that they might be able to open from the 4th of July and yet still have no idea of how that will be achieved because there is nothing coming from from the centre as yet. We pray for greater communication and discussion between the different industries and those in Parliament so that it wouldn't just be a, a case of hearing about the problems but rather 
seeking to solve those problems and finding answers. We pray for our nation. Lord, we heard on, on Sunday about Jesus feeling so sorry because he saw the people and they were like sheep without a shepherd. You know, we sing that so often in our nation and in the world today. We well, thank you that you are the good shepherd. So may we be more open to your leading and your protection and guidance. Lord, we pray for the environment. We thank you that we were able to experience what it's like to breathe in much cleaner air because of the reduction in traffic. We're conscious that that's starting to decline again as more people drive and get back to the normality that maybe we shouldn't be getting back to. Pray that you would have learned lessons and that we would work towards looking after the environment much more than we have been. Lord, we pray for our families. We pray for the challenges that living together bring. Recognising that we don't always get on well with each other, at times we wind each other up. Lord, we pray that you would give us a greater tolerance and acceptance of one another. And Lord, just pray for those who are angry or bitter, for whatever reason. Lord, I pray that you would meet them in their emotions and soothe their anger and bitterness. Lord, please give them a, a fresh insight of your love for them. Lord, we pray for ourselves. We commit our day to you. Let's pray for opportunities, open doors, that we might share your love with others. Lord, we pray that you would keep us ever, ever looking for those opportunities. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have been present with us throughout this virus, throughout our lives. So help us this day to put our hands in yours, to walk closely with you, and to walk your path. So we close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So have a good day today. I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.